I introduce you. I have a couple of words that I've worn right now in Berlin. It's different from the word by feminists. And it certainly uh, is about social skills. But to be quite honest, I really don't have much of an idea of what you're going to be talking about. But I, I know it will be very interesting. Come, please stay away. Hello. Why? Well, um, I think that things are happening now. Events are unfurling for our very lives that have a huge impact on how we're feeling and how we're working and what we're putting out into the world. And I think it's incredibly important, more now than ever before, that we really start thinking about how we are living, how we are working, how we're going about our everyday lives, and actually evolving that to reflect the circumstances we're experiencing. Now specifically, why am I talking about this stuff in front of you guys? Because you're the leaders of the future, right? And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk through the things that we're experiencing and seeing within organisations within London and, and the greater world beyond us. But also to share with you some tips as well, things that we see that we understand how things can work better. And the reason being, as I said, if you're going out into the world, you are the ones that are going to be making this and I really see you guys as the ones that will drive this forward. So I'm really excited to share with you. I genuinely hope that it's the thing that can make a difference in all of our lives. So, let me uh, tell you a little bit about me first of all. Um, I'm Kate, as I said, and I am the founder of Push. Now, I started um, Push five years ago now, five years this week, which is incredibly exciting. I can't quite believe it. Um, and Push is a well-being and performance company. And everything that we do is about helping people, teams, and companies work better. Or, as we like to put it, try and make them a little bit more human. Now, the reason being is, um, prior to starting to push, I actually worked in advertising. And I love working in advertising. But the problem with it was that actually over a period of time, I took 16 minutes. And towards the end of that time I was in advertising, I actually ended up, ended up being silent and stressed. Where I ended up something previously that had totally aligned with my values. Actually, over that period of time, I changed a bit, me to change a bit, and lying at the heart of my work, that, that misalignment was causing me stress. And then on top of that, so many different situations were happening. And it is what I learned from that, and what I could see, is that I genuinely thought that things should work better because I could see this stuff happening and more people around, more and more people being affected by overwhelm, more and more people being affected by anxiety, more and more people being affected by stress. And I really felt that not only did I want to understand it, but that I wanted to do something about it. And that's what this is for, the genuine desire to create change. Because I think that the way that we're working right now really isn't working, right? Within the organisations that we go and speak to, the organisations that I know that you guys are going to be the for, there is a problem. Because what we're doing in these organisations is we've got really old practices. Someone said we used put it earlier. You know, we've got old practices and old traditional ways of working that we can still do in the And on top of that, we've got technology that really expands our capacity to work. And the problem is, is we've still got exactly the same mindset, exactly the same behaviour. And we have to do something about that. Because the challenge that we have, and despite living in this modern world, we've still got exactly the same brains that we had previously. We have brains that are essentially the answer, right? We have exactly the same reaction to stress or reaction to feeling unsafe that we had back then. But back then, it was, a say, the chicken tiger or a man with a club running up behind us and making us feel unsafe, making us in danger. And it was then that we either have to fight our way out of it or we have to flee, we have to run away. We still have exactly the same reaction now, but it happens so much more regularly. It's a looming deadline, or a conversation 
and the boss and honor for the love of stressful. And it is that overproduction of cortisol and adrenaline which is wreaking havoc on our brains and our bodies. 77 percent of people in the last year said that they had experienced mental ill health, right? And this is the stuff that you guys are the ones that dissolve and change. Let me show you what I mean by mental ill health, first of all. When I talk about mental ill health, it's not only more obvious illnesses, so things like PTSD, bipolar, personality disorder, everything you know about mental illness. The greatest challenge, because of this overwhelm, because of this anxiety, because of this stress, is that we have poor mental well-being. And actually, that is the thing that all of us can affect. But I like to keep these things really simple when I talk about them. And I think the thing is, is that we've got a bit of a, an energy crisis, each of us individually. We are entities of energy, right? We have energy coming in, and we have energy that we expel. And I don't think we've got enough energy coming in to deal with what we need to do. To show you what I mean, if you think about it, if you think about it, our personal energy is affected by the stuff that we do, right? It's the stuff that we put in. And at the moment, all of the demands on our time, our work, our people, our tech, and then our poor neanderthal brain is overthinking it all. It can't cope with that, so we have to get better. I think we've got a chance to make a real change if we improve the rituals of energy that we put in. And this is the stuff that all of you, at the stage of your life that you are, it's so brilliant to learn because it's the stuff that's going to influence your whole lives. Because I think that actually there, there are two entities who are responsible for our energy capacity. The organisations, i.e. the companies and the schools, and the buildings that we work within, but also each of us as individuals. We all affect our energy levels. Let me show you what I mean. Organisations, be that schools, be that companies, all have got a responsibility now to energise their employees rather than just draining their energy, which is where I think we are currently. And what I mean by that is that actually we have to realise that the only difference between any company is the individuals that are in it. It is the individuals that create differences within those organisations. So we have to put them first, rather than the expectation that the company runs everything. And if we put those individuals first, then we create environments that energise those people rather than take their energy away. And what I mean by that is empowering people, trusting them, creating spaces where we can be honest and we can be vulnerable in order to get to a place where we can be bold, where we can be brave, where we can be creative, where we can be innovative. And currently, in many places that isn't happening because people genuinely do not feel safe enough to be at their best. The other part of it though is that actually each of us as individuals really, really have to get good at understanding ourselves. The one thing I would share with you, the one thing that I've realised over the last five years from the place where I was signed up with stress because I was breaking myself in the way that I was behaving, is that knowing your own mind is the greatest gift in the world, right? If you understand yourself, you've got superpowers. I know Simon touched on this earlier, you know, in understanding himself, you can work out exactly what it was that he wanted. If we get us, if we understand how we work, then we can develop ourselves and we can manage ourselves better and have the tools to get truly brilliant rather than just existing. And existing is pretty rubbish. Just existing is pretty rubbish. And I know for a fact, you know, that that for me is why I created the company, so I wanted to make sure that no one else felt like that. Because I think that actually, the same stuff, to a greater or lesser degree, is going to happen in all of our lives, right? It's how we respond to it that makes the difference. And the one thing that we can control is how we react. Lots of the things that are happening 
but how we react to them, that's the thing that we've made with them, that's the thing that we can change. And more importantly, our perceptions of the things that are happening. That is where you have control when you can make a difference in your own lives. And in order to have that energy, then the place where you get to a place, the place where you get to an instance where you truly have superpowers as a human, is understanding that energy comes from so many different places, not just one source, but so many different places. Your physical energy, your emotional energy, your mental energy, and your social energy are your purpose. Of course, one spoke a lot about earlier. And what I'm going to do now, this is where I come down to the practical tips, is I'm going to share with you all of them, all of them exactly what they are, where I believe we are at the moment, and the difference between you guys and me. So, first of all, the physical energy. Now, this is the obvious one, right? This is the foundations of how we live, it's making sure you have enough food, making sure you have enough rest, enough exercise, and enough sleep. And if I said to any of you, do you think that you currently are looking after yourself, that you're getting your physical energy, what would you ask me? Yes? No? Are you getting enough sleep? Enough rest? Enough exercise? No? <laughs> no, I'm definitely not. Um, and that's the problem, right? Because this is the foundation. As soon as you're hungry, as soon as you're tired, you just go through in life as well. And I think as well, what happens is we treat ourselves a bit like blooming computers, right? Or a piece of machinery. We plug in and just expect ourselves to keep going. These bodies and brains of ours actually really need to be looked after. If I if I've ever been to life, so if you look over here on the your left, my right, and our energy should pulse, right? It should pulse in different states. It should pulse between this energizing and then this slightly resting period. But here's the problem. And I relate to this so much. When I was working in media before, when I was working in advertising, I was over this side. I was spiking my energy and then I was numbing it, right? And the problem was that when crisis came along, I just energy to be able to deal with it properly. To bring that to life for you, you know, I'd start my week full of eagerness and I'd be eating right and then as I got more and more stressed, I, I didn't sleep as well, I was drinking coffee, I was drinking alcohol by the end of it just to deal with it. And all of it, I just didn't have that balance and I wasn't looking after myself. But when crisis hit in, that's why I ended up depressed, seriously, seriously depressed and ultimately burnt out. So what do we do about it? And again, Simon touched on this slightly earlier, but I really, really would <coughs> stress to you guys the importance of understanding what gives you energy and what that energy feels like. We talk about the energy plots, and this comes from the word about the top level, we talk about stability zones. All of these are things that give you energy, right? And these things that give you energy are both high or low energy. But what we need to work out is what, what those things are, and more importantly, how you can make sure that you keep doing them even during times of stress. Because what will tend to happen is when something is causing, is, is making us very busy, causing the stress or causing the anxiety, we tend to spend more time with that thing that is causing us that stress. And this is when it's most important to do this good stuff, the good stuff that's putting the energy in. Now, a really, really easy way to think about this is just write a list of everything that makes you happy. It's so simple. Things that make you happy give you good energy. But how rarely do we actually think to ourselves, yeah, I've got to know what this list is, I know what all of these things are that make you happy. And, you know, for me, for example, one of the one things that makes me happy is, is, is exercising or spending time with my dog, 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 whatever those things are. Working out what those things are and then making sure that even when we're busy, we put them in. So for example, with exercise, I'll always do it first thing in the morning just because I know that it's done and it gives me more energy for the rest of the day. So working out what makes you happy, writing a list of it, and then how can you do more of it when you are busy? Because actually it's the thing that energizes us to keep going through the hard times. On to our emotional energy. So that's our, that our first scenario, our kind of physical energy. On to emotional energy. So what is emotional energy? The thing is, is that how we feel profoundly impacts how we're performing and how productive we are. But the problem we have is so 
fairly, and we were kind of feeling, let alone the impact it's having on our performance. And you know, if we go back to that thing that I was saying earlier, that as soon as we start feeling unsafe, we go into the stress zone, we just can't perform as well because our brain totally narrows down and is nowhere near as creative, creative or nowhere near as limited as it could be. So what do you do about it? Let me show you what, what, what I mean. If I have to say to you, you would last performing at your absolute best, or your most productive, how did you feel? I bet my bottom dollar that you felt like this. Calm, engaged, optimistic. And you know, when you, when you feel like that, how your energy levels rise and you're absolutely at your best. But here's the problem. Throughout the day, we go through all of these emotional zones, right? We can actually do. Something will come along and it will trigger us. And it will make us, it will put us into a place where we go straight into the survival zone. And we go into that zone, as I said, we just can't perform as well. Now, the thing is, is that naturally, things are going to happen, and I said this at the start of the talk, things are always going to happen that are always going to affect how we're thinking and how we're feeling. But the crucial thing is, because we can't change those things from happening, but what we can change is how we feel about them. What we can change is our perception of them and our reaction to them. And it's about having a set of tools in your pocket to be able to deal with those things. And I'd like to show you some tools now. We call them the really useful forays. There's a clue there, I think they're pretty useful. And basically what they are is two ways of dealing with something that's causing you stress, or two ways of dealing with something with yourself when it comes to something that's causing you stress. So, um, because the reason being is if you have something in your life that keeps coming up and keeps causing you stress, there is only one person that's got responsibility for that, and that's you. You are the person that has the responsibility to change that, either the thing or how you feel about the thing. So, if you are at work, two things that you can do to the thing that's causing you stress, avoid or alter. So in my life then, and um, previously, one of the things that I have used to me as I used to get journey to work was really stressful. It was a tube journey, uh, a central line at 8am in the morning, and it caused me stress not only in that moment, but also the night before because I was thinking about it. So what did I do? In the end, actually, I ended up completely avoiding it. In the end, I ended up walking into work, and I'd get up early, yeah, I'd pay up a little bit earlier, but I knew that I'd have a really enjoyable walk into work rather than feeling stressed from it and angry and that energy would go on throughout the whole day. Or what I could have done is I could have altered it. I could have just got up a little bit earlier, a little bit later and missed that really hard commute. So that's what I was doing to something that's causing me stress. How do I avoid it or how do I alter it? So ask yourself those two questions. Now, except for that, and this is what we do to ourselves about something that's causing us stress. And what I want to share with you here um, is an experience that I had, um, and one of the things that would cause me definitely to have my, my breakdown towards the end. Um, I just been promoted. We were promoted to the head of the team, and I was suffering from something that we call imposter syndrome. Right, so that, people know that term, imposter syndrome? I shouldn't be where I am. I'm not doing the right thing. I don't deserve to be here. Now, the problem with this is that basically what you're doing is you're starting to fight reality. You don't have that belief in yourself. And actually, what I should have done is I should have either accepted the situation or I should have adapted how I felt about it. So to bring to life accepting. What I should have said is actually, whilst I believe in my head, whilst my thinking is telling me, my thoughts are telling me I shouldn't be here, the reality is that I am here and therefore I deserve it. So maybe, for example, when you're coming up to an exam and you're worried about it, rather than those thoughts, those thoughts which are not reality, by the way, which is simply your own thinking, rather than believing those, but getting back into the moment and saying, actually, I believe in myself enough because the evidence I have is that I am here rather than the thinking that's going on in my head. Alternatively, I could have that to come up about it. And actually what I could have said in those moments is, I know that I've got a challenge around it and maybe that should be the thing that's galvanising me forward to work more and to get more invigorated and more excited about this, to, to learn more and to train more, to actually be the best at what I'm doing rather than feeling like this. And more to the point, simply having more confidence in myself. Okay? On to the 
the next one. And this is a biggie, because this is the one around mental energy. And mental energy, I think, is actually one of the greatest problems that we have, because of the huge amount, huge influx of content that is coming at us, and this overstimulation, which is simply exhausting our brains, causing us anxiety, and the thing that may constantly feel that bit of guilt that we're not doing enough. You know, we get 200 emails a day in some instances, and companies who work for 60 to 20 hours of meetings every single week. We have six times the amount of content thrown at us now than we did in the 1980s. I mean, that's insane. And the problem is, is that actually, we're not working in the right way. You know, if I think to myself, actually, the tactical zone is where we need to be, that really logical, uni focus of working. It's so rare I think like that. It's only when I'm on deadline, for example. And when do I think in this big picture zone, in a really creative way, when do I give myself the time to do that? And that's the bit that really genuinely makes a difference in companies or how you're working and when you're studying, when you actually are creative. But the problem is, we end up over here because we end up in a place where we have all notifications coming at us, emails, WhatsApp messages, text messages. We're constantly going between different states and just dialing up and dialing down like a pinball, going around a pinball machine. We end up in a place where sometimes I feel like my brain is like Google Chrome. And I have so many tabs open and I'm flicking between all of them. And actually what we need to get really good at is just focusing on one thing at a time, doing jobs really well and improving our productivity. How do we do that? There are four top tips we give. The first one is to plan ahead. Ideally, either in the morning or even better, the night before. And when you do that, then actually where you get to is a place where you have a really logical focus and to stick to it steadfastly in order to get your job done as expediently as possible. Chunking and grouping, chunk your work down into smaller amounts rather than something that feels huge and that you procrastinate over. And when you do that, also really reward yourself in order to motivate yourself more. Group different tasks together, ones that are creative versus ones that are logical, and actually then being able to get through them much more expediently. Sprinting and breaking, no one, no one can work for eight hours solidly. What we can do is we can work in chunks of time, like 90 minutes, which follows the circadian rhythm, and then having a break away from it to come back to it with more focus. And finally, Turn off and be present. You know, the greatest bane of all of our lives are notifications. Notifications which distract us, take us away from the things that we're focusing on, and then waste all of our time and our energy. So turn off the notifications, be really focused at the moment, and then have a great great moment to deal with all the distractions. And the final energy source, social. And this is purpose. And I think Simon talked about this so beautifully earlier. The thing is, is, when we do the thing that we're meant to be doing, it is the thing that truly energises us and gets us through the most challenging situations. And what I really need to stress here, and I think Simon brought it to life perfectly, is that it doesn't have to be something altruistic. What's really important is that you do the thing in your life that you love, that brings you passion and energy and joy, because it is the one thing that's going to keep you going on times and tough. And it's blowing hard to work out what that thing is, right? Especially because I think that what happens is we end up in a place where we just focus on the stuff that we need to do and getting through that as quickly as possible, rather than maybe what we want to be known for. And then we don't understand. When things don't feel good to us, we don't understand what's affecting us. And it's because we're in the wrong place. It's not getting the best of us, it's bringing out the worst of us. So what do you do? Well, again, Simon said very beautifully the kind of things to focus on. But we talk so much at Push about the importance of values. And values are simply, like we talked about earlier, the stuff that you love, the stuff that's really important to you and how you can do more of it. So, for example, I did this audit recently and I looked at what's really important to me and I've got three core values, right? They are love, they are ambition, and they are humour. And now that I know those, I can see how I can bring them about everything that I do. So first of all, you know, allocating time and energy to areas in my life that seem most important. 
you know, I know, for example, then when it comes to love, actually, that actually within our work, uh, that I want to bring charity into that. Or within my life, you know, when it comes to love, I think it's really important for me to spend time with my family and with my friends in order to bring the best out of me. And then in terms of doing what you do best and enjoy most of work, I know that managing the company is brilliant for me, but actually when it comes down to love and ambition, going out and talking to people and sharing the work that we do with our clients is the stuff that is really going to energize me. And the important thing about all of this, to sum it all up, I come back to this place that what we really, really need to do in order to get to the best of us, or more to the point to get to each of our superpowers, is realising how we each work as individuals, understanding all of our energy sources, understanding what gets the very best and the most brilliant part of us, and then once we've done that, communicating that to other people so that they can get clear on us as well. This is not about saying no to people, it's about saying these are my boundaries, this is how I work, and if you want the best of me, this is how I recommend you do that. Because we are the most important people, and I know that sounds like we're being really selfish, but it's truly not. If you want to have the greatest impact, not only on yourself, but on others and the world, that's how it's going to happen. I think all of us deserve to be as good at being us as Beyonce is at being Beyonce. And that, for me, is how you build resilience in the 21st century world. Thank you very much.